are back in business. We're discussing the oil and gas space and the exploration processes with Mayank Asher, MD and CEO of Kane India. Mayank, thank you so much for taking our time and speaking to us. It's been a landmark shift for the Indian uh, ENP policy. Your first reading of moving to a revenue uh, sharing model from the government side. Uh, yes, uh, good morning. And, uh, you know, I think this is a good step. Uh, clearly, uh, the government is looking at what it can do. Uh, to spur investment and uh, growth in the country. Uh, so we will be examining the details of this, uh, but we uh, commend the government to taking uh, some positive steps uh, which will uh, help uh, investment in this sector. Mayank, uh, the big question is what kind of interest really you, uh, you know, the 69 fields will see I want your comment on that and also on whether you specifically could possibly be interested in any of those. Uh, yes, you know, uh, as, as far as Karen is concerned, um, you know, we have uh, two very good offshore blocks that we are producing from and uh, the Rajasthan uh, uh, block where we continue to both invest um, and uh, focus on production. Uh, so, uh, but we, you know, our market is much broader than Rajasthan and uh, the offshore blocks we have. So we're always interested in blocks that come up. Uh, our team will look at it, analyze it, um, and uh, we believe in India. We believe in growth in India. And uh, what's buttressing uh, our confidence is uh, really our track record over the last 20 years. Uh, we have very, very good uh, people uh, who understand uh, cutting-edge technology. So we'll be looking at it, uh, and uh, clearly uh, we will be looking at it favorably, uh, provided uh, we can make uh, the investment return. You know, the oil prices are low, uh, but there are always opportunities, whether the prices are, are high or low. Uh, so uh, we welcome this step. Uh, and uh, we'll be examining it and seeing whether uh, it's a fit for Cairn or not. I don't have the details, uh, uh, but I can tell you that what Cairn is doing with enhanced oil recovery, with tight oil, it's unlike what uh, most companies are able to do in Asia, not just in India. So, uh, you know, we're always interested in investments uh, that provide returns. Sir, uh, Pranoy here. Uh, I would like to ask you one thing about the viability of these 60. So the detail is that of these 69 blocks, 63 have been relinquished by ONGC and 6 by OIL. The cost viability was not good enough. The reserves were not higher. Given the fact that crude and uh, uh, natural gas prices both are correcting, do you think it will be a viable option for a predominantly onshore explorer uh, like you? Uh, you know, well, first of all, we do both onshore and offshore. Uh, and. Uh, uh, what I would say, the oil prices are low, uh, clearly, and what it requires is the companies to really focus in on capex, opex investments, but our business is a long cycle business. So we will look at it with that longer term time frame in mind. And uh, we, again, we will look at it in details, but uh, you know, in energy sector, this kind of trades happen all the time. Uh, actually, Shell had the Rajasthan block, and they thought it was not viable. And uh, Cairn came in and did a very good job. So, uh, so when uh, assets get switched over or one company is not able to make it, um, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it's uh, not viable because a different company uh, comes in with a different pair of eyes, different technology. Um, so uh, the key thing is, uh, you know, the sector needs to open up. We need good price signals at any price range. Um, and we continue to work with government on a range of things like PSC extension, uh, a full market price for crude oil, uh, perhaps revisiting uh, the CES uh, uh, levies. So uh, th I see this as a step in an ongoing process with Cairn, with the industry, with the government. Uh, we share the government's desire to have more production from India. And for that to happen, uh, lots of things have to happen. So this is, this is a step. And my sense is the ministry and the government wants to have reforms uh, that fundamentally encourage uh, this investment. So we will certainly take a look at it uh, with a uh, fresh pair of eyes.
All right. Uh, so I would like to ask you about your own uh, gas operations and the kind of output from there. Rageshwari, right now, uh, you've set your targets. Is, is the, uh, are you keeping up with those internal targets? Rava, the gas sales, I understand, were shut uh, for almost uh, three and a half months. Uh, given these kind of outputs, do you see some revival in, 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 in the near term and uh, viability also in sync with this going ahead for new blocks at this stage? Uh, I would say yes. As far as gas production is concerned, the interruption was caused by uh, events outside uh, of our operation in logistics area. That has uh, been behind us. And on gas production, actually, we are on target with the market guidance uh, we have given. Uh, so gas production continues uh, both from offshore uh, as well as from Rajasthan uh, at or above the guidance and targets that we have done. So I'm, I'm pleased with this. Uh, um, you know, the, so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, comfortable with Cairn where we are on the gas situation. On the oil situation, uh, you know, our production remains uh, to guidance levels. Uh, um, uh, but the critical thing is uh, what has happened, and we continue to work with government, is levies like CES. I'll just give you a small example. When the oil price rate, when increased around 2011-12 to $100, the government increased the CES levy from uh, 2,500 uh, rupees per ton to 4,500 rupees per ton. Now, now this, uh, this, comprises, uh, this comprises some 10% of the crude price when Brent is $100. But when Brent is below 50, that comprises 20% uh, of the revenue. So, uh, you know, it's really important that uh, the industry, the government, look at what's going on in the world. What's going on in the world with the lower prices? Uh, the governments that want strong internal domestic production are looking at the whole fiscal regime and make sure that they are not disablers for either investment or production growth. So we continue to dialogue with government, not only in terms of releasing blocks like they did with the marginal fields, but what's working, what's not working, because uh, what we can say is we're totally united with the government in having more domestic production. But the critical thing uh, for uh, producers uh, in private sector is we have to earn a return. Um, the producers like Cairn uh, do use very, very good technology that are the best in the world, uh, but we need to make sure the fiscal regime actually helps and uh, is not a retarder. And when prices change so much, uh, it's important we take a fresh look at everything under the sun so that we continue to work uh, together uh, to get the long-term strategic uh, aims uh, of the country. Right, so exactly. Stemming from what you were talking about, uh, Profit Petroleum, your company has been possibly one of the largest private contributors to the government's Profit Petroleum, and it has also taken away on occasion from your PNL in a major way. Uh, the rev in, according to these, the, the new revenue sharing model, 80% of the weightage has been assigned to uh, the kind of revenue and the output that is, being, that is likely to be shared by the government. I mean, those companies will be preferred in those bids. Do you think that will be a deterrent? Well, you know, I, I think the devil's in the details. We have to look at it in uh, full detail. I think the fundamental thing is there has to be a happy medium between government's aims as well as business aims. You know, the business in private sector, in India, anywhere else, will not invest if the risk is too high. So with the risk-adjusted return, uh, I know that the Petroleum Ministry looks at uh, fiscal regimes all over the world. The Petroleum Minister has been very good at, uh, in a listening mode, looking at how do the energy regimes operate, not just uh, in the Asia or around India, in OPEC countries, but all over the world. He was in Canada, he was in Colombia, he was in Mexico, Nigeria, uh, the OPEC meetings. So it's really important uh, that uh, the regimes, uh, whether it's revenue sharing, cost sharing, uh, levies, profit petroleum, all of that at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's a deduction. I'll give you a very small example. You know, uh, we, uh, from Rajasthan, uh, we get uh, the 20%. If you look at uh, the sales price uh, and you deduct operating cost, uh, after that, 80% of what's left goes to the government of uh, India, government of Rajasthan, taxes, ONGC, and Karen gets a residual 20%. Uh, and it's really, really important. You don't look at what Cairn gets on an absolute basis, uh, but uh, uh, Cairn or the industry, is it getting the return? Because fundamentally, if the businesses don't get a risk-adjusted return, they will not invest. 
uh, and that's critical. And I would suggest to you uh, that all the energy experts would say that uh, the industry has been under-investing in oil and gas. Not Cairn. You know, Cairn had uh, the largest capital spending in 20-year history last year. Now, clearly, we had calibrated that in light of uh, uh, in light of lower oil prices we started in November 2014 right. but still uh, we are very much focused we want to invest but we need to make sure the fiscal regime uh, matches uh, to provide returns right Mike I want to come in on that um, at a time where it has been tough for most companies uh, to go ahead and invest in the commodity space to really go ahead and expand the business as well we had a chance in fact to catch up with mr. Anil Agarwal himself and he said you know we still continue to believe in the India story um, and it will be uh, the guiding force for Kane and Vedanta going ahead. What's your own outlook for crude pricing? Is this a new normal that you have aligned your business and your forecast ahead with uh, at the current levels? You know, um, I have watched the oil prices for the last 40 years and I've lived almost uh, not only every year but it feels like every day of the year. Uh, uh, and it's a cyclical business, uh, and, uh, but uh, you know, our chairman is right. Uh, we do believe in the India story. You know, having said that, businesses have to be prudent. And the businesses that survive over the long haul are able to withstand the low parts of the cycle as well. And uh, you know, I'm very proud of uh, Cairn. Uh, we have some of the lowest costs in the world. Having said that, uh, you know, uh, it is very, very important that we dialogue very openly, not just with the government, with the media, with the people, because energy is a critical resource. Natural resources are critical. And it's only when you don't have it. Or, you know, I remember in 1973 when there were lineups in the United States uh, because there wasn't enough uh, uh, petrol there. Right. So uh, energy is a st strategic commodity that we need to kind of both uh, industry and the government has to look at it over the full cycle. But mm -hmm. yes, we believe in the India story. Mayanka, we speak at a time where all commodity producers have been under pressure. Your stock as well as down. I don't expect you to comment on how the stock has been doing. Uh, influential brokerages this morning, including CLSA, have reiterated buy on cane with a price target of 225, um, saying that the concerns are overdone. All the worries that shareholders have that you know cash will be sucked out of cane India to go on to the parent company as well are, are misjudged uh, at this point. What would your uh, response or uh, you know communication to shareholders be at this point? There are still on tender hooks on where the merger is really headed. Yeah, you know, what we would say to the shareholders is uh, there is a process, it's well defined. We talked about it uh, when we went out uh, to the shareholders, uh, and uh, the shareholders have good information, uh, and they will vote on this uh, at the right time uh, with a good process. Uh, so, uh, you know, they have to make up their own minds. Uh, I, I will tell you, you know, uh, for the past 40 years, I've lived in uh, USA and Canada. Uh, and the one story that didn't quite come out uh, was, uh, I'll call it the national resource champion. Uh, you know, in Canada, BlackBerry, uh, when at the height, was a national brand. And the U.S. has many, many brands that people are proud of. Uh, and Cairn, uh, you know, Vedanta, uh, the, the shareholders will decide how this merger unfolds. But regardless how it goes, I think the key story here is you have companies like Vedanta and Cairn that operate very, very well in the world stage. You know, if you look at uh, Vedanta's uh, mining business and compare that to others all over the world, it's very, very strong. If you look at Cairn's operating performance, its people, its technology, it is phenomenal. Uh, and I, I think uh, that's the bigger story that you have Indian companies doing very well. And it's important we think long term. You know, we have a two trillion uh, dollar economy uh, that the uh, prime minister has a vision to go to 20 trillion. And I will tell you, you cannot do that without natural resources. It just will not happen. The natural resources, oils, metals are a key part of this. And we need to have a strategic view. You know, oil prices are down today. Uh, tomorrow they will be up. But you cannot. Uh, investment cycle is seven years long. So it's important we think strategically. All right, uh, Mank, thanks so much for joining us uh, with that very exclusive conversation 
on uh, all those comments that we saw on the takeaways from the cabinet decision yesterday. On that note, let's very quickly also tell you how the markets are looking at this point. Has been a good start. Hiral, what's happening at this point? That's correct, Sudhana. We are seeing some bit of cheer in terms of where opening is concerned as well. In the last half an hour of trade, both the indices, if you see, up by almost 1% in trade. Nifty almost close to the 7,800 mark. To be noted that 7,667 was one of the levels that we had to watch out for. It has clearly surpassed that and is trading way above that. In terms of stocks which are gaining, the entire cement pack up in trade, if you see Ambuja cements up by 4.5%, as we know that uh, sources are indicating that cement prices have been hiked in the north region on the back of which we are seeing some.